Mexico. How old were you right when it came out? I wasn't born yet. I got born in 80. <laughs> and the world hasn't been the same since. Uh -uh. How's punk rock different now than it was in 1979? I don't think it is. I think it's the same. It's just, I think it's smaller, but it's more, people are more into it more often, but a lot of people don't like really give a shit. They're just like, well, I got a mohawk, let's go out. And they go home and get a job and all that stuff. So you, if you're really a punk, you don't have a job? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying get a job if you can, but I'm just saying some people, they're just, it's just like a hobby. How old were you when it first came out? I wasn't even I was, born. I was, I was just I was born. zero. I wasn't born yet. How old were you when the first time it came out? A sperm cell in his father's testicle. Like one and a half. I was zero. Uh, I was just born, but uh, I own it. I was an abortion that couldn't get paid for. <laughs> we're sorry, buddy. We're He's sorry. Sorry. I came here to see offspring. We came to see Green Day. Who? Do not play it for a No! You know what? I know a guy that can suck an icy through his nose. Hey, 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 Attention! Attention, buttholes! Please be advised! Please be advised! Step by your entry into these premises! By your entry into these premises! More spit! More spit! You are consenting to being photographed! You are consenting to being photographed! Yeah! And to having your likeness... Then having your likeness! Your up likeness use an emotion picture use an emotion picture for pornographic purposes fuck you fuck you your spirit is great if you share it the next decline is coming up and uh if you guys want to be in it fuck shit up out there in the crowd tonight check two Check, one, two. Insurance check. Check. Check it one time for me. Check it once, twice, three times. Three times. All right. Next time, throw money to get quad. Inside this mine, nowhere to hide. Inside this mine, the time to find. There's a step, now we're not in, not that guy. Now we're not in, there's a step, now we're not in, not that guy. Now we're not in, inside this mine, nowhere to hide. Squid, and how I got the name. Oh well, uh, it's kind of a take out. Well, I drink like a squid. Uh, my name's Filth, and I really am not sure how I got it. Probably because I'm like dirty. Um. Okay. My name's Spinner, and I got it when I was 13 because I used to do a lot of speed, and I was always spun out. So, what's your name? Me. Why me? Spoon. Little Tommy the Queer. Okay, all right. I'm Troll. And I'm Hamburger. Or Mr. Right. Potato Head. My name's Nate, and I'm 15. And I'm Justin, and I'm 16. My name is Herc. Uh, my name's Sage. Uh, my name is Pinwheel. My name is uh, Keith Morris, and I was the original lead singer in Black Flag and went on to start a fabulous band called The Circle Jerks. Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills.
century city. All the people look the same. Don't they know they're so damn lame? What was it like back then? Well, there was a lot of energy. There was a lot of anger. It wasn't like it is today where you could go out on any corner and see punk rock people hanging out. I was a complete waste. That was the reason why I was able to get away with a lot of the things that I got away with. Does it make any difference to you that you never, like, became the big, huge rock star? Never wanted to be a rock star. I am a rock star! Kids now have even more reasons to be angry and upset. Our society kind of almost pushes them in that direction. They're basically trapped. They're cornered and they've got to fight their way out of these corners. There's more people, and because there's more people, there's more crime, there's more corruption, there's just more bullshit in general. When we have the Republicans who keep stressing this family values thing, and those fuckers can more than afford to have, you know, adhere to the family value things because they're out there ripping off the public. They've got the money to spend. So the world's gotten uglier over the past uh, few years. Well, it pretty certainly ugly. hasn't got any more beautiful. But then the punk rock thing was never a beautiful thing. Describe to me what it was like in the original punk rock days. Yeah, it was just absolutely great. You know, it's really free, really different, really radical, um, true to itself. Um, didn't have any idols, a lot of anger, a lot of, a lot of anger that wasn't really vented at any particular thing, just at everything. Punk rock, if you will, is the siren for all the problems we're having right now in this, in our society. And it's shrieking. <laughs> What is that? Hell is it What is I God damn fucking shit, my lord. You don't mean nothing to me. I know you for religion. I know you for me. Tell me, 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 why the same two murder? Carnage is all I see. Have no use for religion. Have no use for me. Well, tell me what you think is the most fucked up about the world. Everything sucks. In what ways? In every which way possible. None of it works. The environment, the government. Everything, our school systems. They just pretty much ruined everything. What do you hate the most in the world? Um, how people hate each other for no reason. You know, everybody just judging people by their fronts, you know. Just like not liking someone because they're black or Mexican or whatever. People are people. I mean, I may look intimidating to other people just because my hairdo or the way I dress or whatever. But you know what? You don't know who I am. And meanwhile, the right wing is organizing with guns, bombs and politicians so we have to stop fighting each other and start fighting the real enemy which is big business and the right wing we have to get together and unite against them and revolt how long have you been having punk rock at your theater nine years yeah. you had nine years of punk rock correct since 88 yeah. and you survived uh, almost there look at the gray hair <laughs> <laughs> As soon as the music starts, something takes these people, you know? They, they be moving, going crazy, jumping everywhere, and... Uh... We are wards of the jungle of life, but I could have been a protest tonight! Oh, yeah. Chaos. You know, it don't look like a dance, like me and you, we know, you know? <laughs> Usually, you know, they're so proud to see the blood and uh, 
when they bleed, they don't want you even to clean them up. They just leave, you know, this is a scar, I like this. <laughs> leave it alone. <laughs> a badge of courage. Oh, yeah. Tell me all the times you got hurt. I broke my nose three times, that's about it. It's, like, it's not very violent, it's just dancing sometimes you fall down. If you try to stop the dance and the marching and stuff, you, you just ask him for trouble. You will have problems. Actually, we will find out just to leave him alone. They know the rules of the marching. They go and doing their thing, and no trouble happens. They get political sometimes, yeah? Uh, there is a couple of groups, or the, which we'll call them the good skinhead, which is the, uh, the group which we call Unity or Sharp. They call themselves Unity, but they're full of shit. Are they they're white supremacists? No. What are they? They're sharp skins. What does sharp stand for? Uh, skinhead, Guinness, uh, Ra racial prejudice, yes. Skinheads against racial prejudice, which is great, but they're turning into a gang and fucking up punks at shows. Both of them bad, really, because the Nazi skinhead, they're coming here to beat on a Mexican or on black or whatever minority. Nazi skinheads come all the time. Ugh, I hate Nazis. I just don't believe in that shit. I'm half Filipino, and these, like, these Mexicans were going, wait, get the fucked up haircut, white boy. And I've been to a KKK rally in Austin, Texas, and got arrested for, for uh, trying to fight this Klansman that was uh, telling me to swim back to China and all that, and I'm not even Chinese. But the other one, they go going inside and sniffing around for any Nazi. Anybody have a little lace, red lace, or, you know, different kind of shoes, whatever. So they start to ask him question. oh, you're Nazi, okay, I'm going to beat you up. I got jumped by a bunch of skinheads. When they fight, they don't fight fair. They fight one against, yeah, I mean, 20 against one guy. They're usually a bunch of sissy faggots that'll run off and be scared usually because there's usually more of us. They kept kicking my face into a, a door of a car. And they surrounding one guy and they beat him up to death, you know? So what happened to your jaw? Uh, it was broken here and here. And uh, I had to get it wired for eight weeks. So we won't allow either, either party. If they come in here, they have to follow our rules, which is very simple. No politics. When you go home at night, do you listen to this? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I listen to Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Louis Armstrong. I have nothing to do with this. It's strictly business. I can eat food now, so I'm happy. <laughs> I don't have to puke through fucking wired jaw. It comes out like a sprinkler when I did. This next one goes out to one of the most oppressive forces. Oppressor of women. Oppressor of gays. And basically an oppressor of all free thought. I'm not talking about a politician. I'm talking about organized religion. People who fucking abuse other people's faith for money. Rocker, do you think? Because I'm angry. Because hey. people don't like me. Because I don't fit in. Because I'm a fucking nerd. Uh, all my life I've always felt like separate from everybody else. Like I couldn't hang. Tell me what you think made you a punker, like in your background. I'm not really having a family. It made you tough? Yeah. So punks don't get their feelings hurt so easy? Uh, I think they do. They just cover it up with spikes and color and shit. <laughs> It's not about, you know, the way you look or it's not about, you know, anything like that or where you're from or how old you are or anything like that. It's, it's all about how you live your life. 
I don't have a lot of friends. I don't choose to hang around with a lot of people. I don't mix well with people. I just like to be alone and read. I found just a tight group of friends, like three or four of them, that I can actually hang out with, and they're all just like me. They have the same feelings of rejection. I guess being a punk, to me, it's not really about what you are, but what you are not. If you know what I mean by that, I'm not. And what are they not? We're not, we're not, uh, I tend to think, I tend to hope that we're not, you know, all selfish and all, you know, committed to simply ourselves, but we like to, you know, give to each other. And I don't see that a lot, you know, in, in a capitalistic society or just a real structured society. I think punks are probably the nicest people you ever meet. At least that's what I've seen. You seem like you have a good heart to me. I try. The whole thing is like, adopted me. I could go across the state anywhere I want to, and I'm welcome. These are the kids that I live with. They're my family, they're my support, they're my love, they're everything. Anyone besides punk rockers I do not socialize with. <laughs> What pisses you off the most? Cops. I hate them. We represent everything they're against. What do you represent? Pretty much doing what we want to do. The unique thing about them is they dress all different. Uh, there's not one set dress that the way the punk rockers dress. Um, but one thing is unique that whatever it is, they, how they dress, is going to be something that's going to catch your eye. Who made your jacket? Me. How long that take? A couple of years. That's what they're looking for is the attention that they haven't had, I think, when they were growing up. Um, that's with the hair sticking up, uh, maybe the mohawk with the red color or the purple coloring, uh, the nose piercing, all the different piercing, the tattoos. I was drunk, but someone stuffed it through my nose. I had the M put on in, in Prescott, Arizona the year before last, and the dots done in Seattle last year. The leather, the chains, things like that that... Um, me and you would maybe not wear in the norm, but when we're driving down the street and we turn and look, it's something that definitely catches our attention. It's a uh, rib bone off a dog. A rib bone? Yeah, like a puppy or something. I'd like to say that all police officers have seen everything, but that's not the case. And every day we see something different, and they definitely are able to open our eyes sometimes. So what do you got in your ear? Uh, What's a that? Pen tube. A what? Pen tube. Stuck in your ear? Yeah, it's... Is there a hole that big? Yeah, it's, it's really not even big. You should see all that. My friend Ted's got big old plugs like this. I seen a guy on Murrow's. He had like soda pop cans stuck in there, but. In the earlobe? I don't know. This is big enough for me because I think when it gets that big, it's. Dude, that's so ugly. Who can do the craziest thing? Who can do the most outrageous thing so everybody notices him? What's your uh, tattoos on your hands say? Taco Bell. <laughs> Do you ever make fun of them? No, I don't think it's so much making fun, except uh, try, maybe trying to understand uh, their point of view and where they come from. We just like to be treated with respect and like everybody else, yeah, and they I, don't seem to give us that. You know, if somebody tries to tell us something, we'll, we'll take it into mind, but if they try to force it on us, we'll fight back even more. When I'm in trouble with the police, it's because of something I did wrong, usually. Not, not, because, not because they're just fucking with me. We, we sometimes come across them at underground parties um, in terms of where they'll rent a warehouse out or they'll rent something out in a basement and they'll pack in the people and then we'll get a phone call from the neighbors or from the fire marshal that want to shut these people down. There will be about 100 punks getting drunk outside of the show. Cops will come. People will get pissed start throwing beer bottles at the cops and riots start happening and place gets shut down. 
the type of problems that we have with these kids are probably not as great as some of the other major problems we have with, say, with gang violence or robberies and things like that. Don't they got some kind of rapist to bust or something? We're just trying to get out there and try to get them back in touch with their parents or with people that, you know, have legal guardianship over them. Do your parents like your hairdo? Um, no. Excuse me? No. I've also come in contact with, with kids that are like this, that have very loving and caring homes. And, you know, in that situation, their, their son or daughter goes out on a Friday night and then comes home with a, an earring or comes home with their hair colored and stuff. And the parents are looking. Sometimes they turn to the police looking for help. Johnny, you said you were going to the Menudo concert. What do your parents think of your tattoos and piercing? Um, well, my mom's got, like, five piercings and a tattoo, so she doesn't really care too much. It turns out more than not that they are just don't like authority, and we represent authority. You got any more under your shirt? No, uh, just, just one. Can you describe the music they play? Um, very loud. Very loud, very loud, very loud. Watch out, my mom! <laughs> We don't need it. Do you like cops? Uh, 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 no. No? Fucking assholes. What do you think about the cops? They can suck my dick. Because <laughs> they're a bunch of fascist ass cracks, they can suck my dick again, part two even. The cops don't do anything good except fucking harass us every day. They're so corrupt. They're so damn corrupt. Only beat up by the cops one time? No, about three times. Different precincts of... Like, they'll put the handcuffs on it, and you'll be right there, and they'll, like, squeeze them. Like, squeeze it, so it, like... The handcuffs? Yeah, I, I, once I didn't feel my, my thumb for about a week. They put a phone book over my face and hit me with a club. And they're assholes. And they stole, all my, and they stole my leather jacket and all my clothes. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, there's supposed to be a certain area where we have to hang out at. And, and then one cop's like, yeah, why don't you try the city zoo? And I'm like, fuck, the city zoo. <laughs> when will you start to get angry? When will you start to fight back? Fascist state! Fascist state! Fascist We don't need it! So who do we look at then? Either one? Each other. Each other. Oh. <laughs> I'd never been in a band before. I was a French horn player. Take two. I did not know how to write rock and roll music or sing it, but I could. I had the expression and the anger and all this aggression in me, and Phil just helped me. Pissed, man. extremely loud voice for how big she is and that kind of gave me the idea like hey maybe she should be like a singer in like a rock band oh what his is that mom put a guitar in his hand when he was like two or something uh, oh really no. she has all like a little baby rocker Three, here four. Oh, God. <laughs> trying to make my living on classical guitar like when i was going to school <laughs> <laughs> so the guys next door oh. oh one side of us is a heavy metal band that practiced and on the other side we have a mariachi bar that's like right on the other side of this wall and they, yeah. have, they have live mariachi bands every friday and saturday night so you got mariachi heavy punk rock and heavy metal heavy metal christian guys that do speed and watch pornos they're from alabama 
Boring. Are they really religious, though? They're boring and serious Orthodox. boring and Christians. How do they justify <laughs> the uh, Christian thing with the uh, speed and the porno? They have, uh, have you ever stayed up for a couple days on speed? You can make all kinds <laughs> of things sound tangible. I, w- I, w- I wouldn't know personally. Yeah. Aaron, where do you work? I work at Pizza Place. Yeah. I shouldn't say that. All right. I made 800 pizzas today. I try to stay home and work out of the house. I like to fix cars, uh, do construction, welding. I work at dry cleaners. <laughs> I'm graduating to pressing pretty soon. This is like a job where it's pretty kickback. You have to deal with pricks a lot and a lot of fucking assholes come in with their shit clean and get mad at you when their shit doesn't come back all sparkly white, but, you know, it's pretty oh, wait, kickback Wait, these people job. walk in there to get things cleaned up and you're standing there with green hair, what's up? And they just come, where'd you get that green hair? Oh, I found it in the backyard, you know? Shit, How come your hair's cool. green? You know, I went swimming in Santa Monica, you know, stupid shit like that. Everyone thinks that punk rock bands should be poor and exploited, but any other co- musician can make money and... I don't know, okay. So, Kirsten, hmm? how do you feel about that? That's bullshit. No one should be exploited. The funniest part of this whole money and exploitation thing is um, nowadays in the 90s, mo- there are so many bands out there getting screwed over by independent labels, and... um. In the scene, a lot of people get mad at bands that they sign to major labels, but in the 90s, the major the labels major are not really screwing bands over anymore. You're in a bind, though, because a lot of your fans are not going to dig you if you sign oh, to totally. a major no. label. Right. That's, that's the irony of it all. Come on. Actually, here's our mail order. We just have like, all the stuff under here. March, March, a live album. We have our selection of uh, fine naked aggression patches and pins. Assorted colors. For any occasion. Bitter Youth album. We still made a heat dryer and we silk screen these ourselves. These are like a punk sucks. I got mean, like compilation CDs. <laughs> well, there's one kid at this show, man. They're all cool, dude. They got those butt flap things. And I'm like, oh well, it's God. a back patch, but I suppose you could wear it on your foot. There's so many screwed up things going on, like this culture of take everything and waste it all. And you don't need love. You don't need family. You don't need friends. You don't need anybody. You just need money. You just need things to make you happy. But punk rockers don't think that way. Well, if they see things in a different light than, you know, someone that lives in front of the TV or borrows daddy's BMW to go, you know, to the store to buy a new blouse because I'm sad. What are some of the causes that you've been asked to raise money for? To help build a rape crisis center. Okay. Did we do a lot of organization for women. Yeah, women's rape. shelters for abused women. Um, AIDS research. Did some guy need his rent paid in order to benefit. Oh, that was, well, that was at a. Uh, yeah, that we've, done, awesome. we've helped pay that people's Eric, rent. Uh... There was a, a protest to go on to help defend this doctor's house in a local clinic that gave abortions. Phil and I rounded up like 30 to 40 punks in a whole a bunch of different vans, and we all drove across town to the clinic. And all the people that were there already were just like, whoa, because there's these 40 punk rockers just jumping out of vans, ready to, like, defend the clinic. Once we played a show in Denver, the cops came and started beating up this little punk rock girl that was, like, 14 years old. So all of her friends jumped the cops and started beating the fuck out of the cops. They started smashing their glasses. They started smashing them on the ground. They were bleeding. The cops wanted us to go to court. And we said, fuck you, we're not going to court to testify you. No way. We're like, well, can we play one more song? And they're like, yeah. So we played the song Death to All the Pigs. And we packed up and they escorted us out of town. Yeah, what would you do if you ever got famous? And those people would be like jumping all over your car and shit when you leave the place. <laughs> I would probably hate it. Probably try to run them over. <laughs> we just do the things we always like to do, but we're still going to know the world's still fucked up. There's still people starving to death and being killed by death squads. I'd probably be able to buy car insurance. <laughs> My radiator's broken. <laughs> <laughs> what do? What do? Oh, 
How do you make your money? I don't. What money? Panhandle, I uh, collect bottles. Rob and pillage. Do whatever. Sometimes I rob, steal, spare change, whatever. Panhandling or uh, photo spanging or doing uh, labor work here and there. It's like photo construction. What? Photo spanging. What does that mean? It's uh, it's. We go stand out in front of a uh, man's Chinese theater with our hair all charged and stuff, and uh, tourists come by and want pictures, so we just charge them. We spend, charge tourists money, yeah, take our ugly pictures. They give me a dollar or so each photo. In fact, we just made two bucks on the way here. <laughs> Today I made like three bucks the whole day, and that was shit. About ten bucks a day, and I spend it all on beer and then mooch off of him. Anywhere from like 10 to $20. And you can live on that? Yeah. Could be all charged up, find out on Melrose, make like 50 bucks. So make about 40 or 50 bucks though, that's all okay. Capitalist bastard. Aren't you embarrassed to ask people for money? No, because I'm not begging. What are you doing? I'm asking, I'm asking for welfare. I'm asking for someone to help me out. People trip out. Well, you're gonna buy heroin or something, you know. Well, if you want to buy me food, go ahead. That means I got more money in my pocket for beer. Down. When you rob, where do you rob from? Stores, people, cars, houses. You ever feel guilty about that? No. Why don't you go get a job? It's hard to find jobs for people looking like me. I don't want a job. I don't want to do that. I don't need that. Pops on the bottle, I pop on share. Someone hit her wall, but win another chair. Pops like those accidental molesters. Bernie Tins is out today, guy. Nishiwa. Torchin. Spare quarter for disorder. Pops, please, Bernie, change it off, folks. All right, thanks a lot, and have a very lovely day. I swear I won't waste it on food. Even a few pennies, a nickel, Even a dime. Even throw it at me. Spare a dime, prevent a crime. I've got an extra cigarette. I'll be your best friend. How about an answer? Is there an answer? Okay. Any change at all, buddy? Change no, anything no, else? No. Come on, sexy. No, no, no. No. Whoa, right on. Thank dude. you. Cheers. Thank you so much, sir. Ex corner star, out of business, DJ. Oh, yes. We got it. Down. Hey, cheers, cheers man. Cheers, man. Any answer? Say no. Bitch. Spit on me for a quarter. Shit on me for a dollar. Huh? Kick me in the nutsack for 50 cents. I'll kick you in the nutsack for 50 cents, like motherfucker. Fuck, fuck, I'm that Schwarzenegger. Fuck the actors at the presidential ball. Uh, that's a cool from short 10 cents. Fuck over at Arsenio Hall. Beat up the beast with those stupid bricks. Sleeping out with them and they're sucking dick. Ow! Lower the crime rate. Spare some change. Lower the crime rate. Spare some change. Lower the crime rate. Spare some change. Next person I jack, maybe someone you know and love. Spray change it off for a case? Oh, so the back. Spray change it off for the old folks home. Spray any change for some glasses. Spray any change so I can get up dressed for the prom. Spray any change it off, fella, for the spray Unabomber. Change. You spray any ch change it all, madam. Spray change it off for a fucking plastic purse. Spray any change it all by any chance. Anything else? Oh, oh shit, it's Bruce Hershenson. Everybody spend a little bit of change to get another one of those. Yeah, one of those. Recycle it if you want. Here. Fucking change. In the first punk rock days, did you do drugs? Sure. I think everybody did. Like what kind? Um, pills, heroin, um, alcohol. Whatever was around, basically. What does it do to your body? 
it uh, fucks your body up. Um, you're not eating, you're not sleeping in uh, the right order anyway. If you're having sex, maybe you're having it too much or too little. Just uh, basically uh, screws up everything. Why did you do it? Felt good at the time. And it's peer pressure somewhat. I just wish I hadn't wasted so much time doing drugs. Let me see your arms. Your arms look pretty clean. Sure they are. Just the scars. Just the battle scars. Yeah. I don't do drugs. Uh, used to. Quit. Too many friends dead. So where'd you meet little Tommy the Queer? Uh, at an N.A. meeting, actually. N.A.? Yeah. Narcotics Anonymous. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and you're 15? Yeah. What was you kicking? Speed. And you? Downers, like codeine and stuff. Beer bud and once in a while heroin. No drugs. Booze. This cup is the best $2 investment I've ever made. Every Let me time. See it. I can't see it from oh, work. Okay, well, it's a club refill from, uh, I think, Chevron. See? Yeah. Hangs on my shoulder here. Usually I stumble on, you know, if I got no beer or no alcohol, let's say, crack it off, see? Spare swill. What's in that <laughs> bottle? Space juice. <laughs> you drink every day? I, uh, yeah. I have to drink every day or I freak out, you know, DTs. And how much? <laughs> Enough to black out every night, I don't know. What time in the, in the morning you start drinking hamburger? Six in the morning, once they start selling. Beer store opens at six, closes at two, so. And what time you stop at night? Two in the morning, once they stop selling. <laughs> so when did you start drinking today? Uh... It was about 10 this morning. As soon as I wake up, I'm going to freak. Usually when I wake up. Whenever I wake up. You hear all funny and you see the little detox gremlins running around and... Do you have a lot of hangovers? No. I always wake up buzzed. <laughs> I can't even eat unless I at least have just a few sips. I mean, dude, a 12 ounce can of beer in the morning uh, and I'll be all good. How old were you when you started drinking? Uh, about 14. About 12. Like, Channel 11? The first time I ever got drunk, I almost drowned in the toilet seat because my dad my uncle got me drunk. I, and I drowned in the toilet seat almost. They were feeding me beer all day. But I don't know. The first time... How old were you then? About three. Why do you think you started so young? Problems. It's not really fun to be in reality. I'm a lot better person to be with when I've got a couple of frosty cold ones. Are you nasty otherwise? Uh, boring. I'll just, I want to I wanna go to find a farm and live there without nothing. Simple just life? just grow stuff and just have friends around and brew beer and drink all day and get drunk and hang out with friends. And just br have a compound. Right on. Commune. Yeah. yeah. That's what you want? You want a beer commune? Yeah, the alcoholic commune. All I remember was... I was at my fucking cousin's house, Linda, and I took a big old chug because I was all asking my dad if I could take a swill off a beer, and it was whiskey. He's all, it's not beer. And he poured himself a glass and went to the bathroom, and I grabbed it, and I just swilled it all down. It started all burning inside me, and it all sp sprayed out my nose right back in his cup, and there was a booger <laughs> all floating around inside of it. And he came back and he grabbed it and swilled it. And me and my sister were sitting there going, <laughs> that fool just drank my loogie. <laughs> but I don't know. An alcohol extreme is taking a solid shit. And we went up there. They lived like on the third floor and we're knocking on the door. And they wouldn't answer. And I'm like, come on, I know you're home. I know you're home. Come on, open the door. And they wouldn't open the door. And I was all, fuck this. I'm just going to go into the alley outside. And I'm like running down the stairs and I got to the bottom stairwell and I took like this giant leap and it just went <laughs> everywhere. And I'm like, oh man. You shit in your pants. Oh yeah, but I like took newspapers and, and stuff and I tried to clean up, but, and they were home.
home. And they were even home the whole time. Straight up, I don't give a mad fuck what anybody thinks about me. Right? I just don't want that fucking shit like pointing at me. It just makes me like. Well, I'm sorry, but this I is like what it. I do in life. All right, that's your hobby. This is my hobby. Two beers are red and one. Two beers are I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You ain't gonna get no footage, huh? I don't think so. <laughs> ah! Wow! Look at that! Good job! All right, girl. I know. This boy, this boy had sex right next to me while I was passed out in the bathtub, and then I woke up and I did that because I was really fucking drunk. <laughs> You burned yourself with a cigarette. Oh, with a couple of cigarettes. <laughs> Every one that I smoked that night, I put it out on my arm. I had a couple of friends do it, too. Did it hurt? I didn't feel it at the time, but now it hurts like a son of a bitch. Well, why don't you put something on it to make it not get infected? I'm lazy and I don't want to. <laughs> and since I got it started, I might as well finish it. So as soon as I get drunk enough, I'm going to finish it. going to make an armband of Yep. Yeah, you got to get the good one right there. <laughs> the one that is going to get infected. Oh, God. No need for this. Let's go. Hey, let's go. Can I say something for the record? Those are not my friends. I don't know them. Everybody needs to believe in something. I believe I have a. My parents were the typical conservative winkers. Yeah, half of my family are gangsters. And I'm the only punk rocker. Do they think you're weird? Yeah, they think I'm weird, but they know what I'm fighting for, so. Um, my parents are Mormon. I, I grew up with a, with a military father, military family. Yeah, my family was cool, but my, my dad was kind of a prick. My mom used to be a hippie, and my real dad and my stepdad used to be like rival pot dealers in high school. And just a, a bunch of crap went down when they were kids. And now they're so middle class, it's so pitiful. White picket fence life is oh. what they live. You think they love you? Yeah, they might. I don't know. You don't talk to them? Nah. So why did you leave home? Because I was forced out physically by my parents. Because they, they couldn't deal with me and... I couldn't deal with them. Well, they kicked me out. I said, good riddance. Well, my dad tried to, like, force a stepmom on me, you know? And my stepmom was like, she didn't want me. 
She put me in a Muffet mental institution. When you were how old? Seven years old. And my dad pulled the old, I'm going to the store for smokes, be back in five. You know how long it's been since I've seen my pops. Why did you originally leave home? Um. When you were 13? Physical abuse. I, I lived with my dad and he wasn't, you know, I, he used to beat me and stuff. Did your dad hit you? Yeah. Tell me about that. It doesn't feel good. What I mean, would happen? Makes, Tell it, me what would happen. It makes me feel like a little kid again. I mean, it, it's demeaning. What did he beat you with? Uh, chairs, his fists, whatever he can get his hands on. Any number of objects. I mean, anything from a belt, you know, to, to a stick, to a pipe, to a power tool. You know, anything my father could get his hands on. Chairs, I had my head put through windows. What would your dad hit you with? His fist. His fist? Yeah. Where? Face. And other places, too. For what? Because I'm smarter than he is, and I can make him feel like an idiot. So are any of those scars from your father? No, not on my chest. Where are those? Um, I've got one on my shoulder, some on my back, my legs, my face. Did it make you sad when he did that? Yeah. Made me feel helpless because I can't do anything. He's fucking 6'3", 200 pounds. Did he uh, physically abuse any other kids in your family? My sister. Physically and sexually. When you think about it now, do you get sad? Yeah. Yeah, I get sad. Do you, um, you think that's why you're a punk? I think that's a big part of it. If you have children, are you going to do that to them? No. I'd take a little bit better care of them. What would you say to him right now if you could just say one thing? Hi. have you been homeless off and on since 12. have you ever lived in a house or an apartment i've stayed in a few apartments that's about it like overnight and where do you live now um in this field behind burger king or alleys wherever i stay i live wherever i sleep okay where do you sleep um usually camping out you know outside places or sometimes you know in this in this drinking field in a what in, in a drinking field. What is that? It's, like, it's just like a field. There's like two fences and you can you just drink in there with other people. I don't stay indoors too much. It's not in a domesticated house. I don't feel very comfortable <clears throat> living indoors. Actually, you're the only punk around that's got their own apartment. Yeah. Yeah. How old were you when you first started squatting? 13. Since I was 16, I'm 22 now. I've been in thousands of squats all over the country. Well, I gotta break into a new squat pretty soon. Same here. So all these lazy bums don't want to fucking help me. I do, I do. I... How do you find a squat? Um. Just walk around, find a place that looks empty. Boarded up house, an abandoned building. Wait till dark fall and break into it. 
rip a board off. Crowbar. Invite yourself in. And then you live there. And then you live there. And they call it squid squat. No. <laughs> that was just a joke we got out of South Bay. But it got busted, or else you would have been able to film there today. That was down squat. That was my last squat. The neighbors loved us. We had it set up. It was so clean. It was nice. It's the best house I ever lived in. This city has become a lot more hostile and a lot less caring as time has gone by. I know it's a drastic difference in a short amount of time, 10 year period of time, 15 year period of time. It's, there's a drastic different feeling in this city. It's more hostile, it's more cold, it's less forgiving, it's less flexible. And um, it's got to be hard for a homeless kid now. I, I know when, when I was like punk rock, you know, in whatever, like 1981, you know, I went and stayed at the Cash Club at a Janet Cunningham's contemporary artist space of Hollywood with like, you know, Animal Boner and all these punk rock guys that were sleeping on the couch there. And like, it was just like, this sense of community, you know, we could stay there and there'd be like poetry re readings and people making art and making music and this feeling of like, you know, maybe you're, you're like, don't have a family and you don't have friends, you don't have a place to stay, but here's an umbrella, you know, this umbrella of art or whatever you want to call it, a punk rock, and it's like a feeling of, of being loved, which is what everyone wants, you know? Yeah. You know, um, and, you know, for like kids that are homeless now, like, you know, walking the boulevard or whatever, you know, fuck, man. What are you going to do with that dog? You don't even have a home. How can you have a dog? I manage to take care of myself every day. That's why I sold my dog. You sold your dog? Yeah. For how much? 30 bucks. So I can get loaded last night. <laughs> Life is boring when you're stuck out on the streets, you know. It's, it's the only thing to have fun is to get high or get drunk. That's the only thing you time. can do. Yep, kill time. I live right here in this filth and garbage and sign that you see every day in LA. <laughs> and I enjoy it. There's nowhere left to go. So we hang out here on the streets. So, what are you going to be doing in five years, man? Well, I was thinking about running for maybe president one day, you know? Free beer for everybody, yes! Where do you sleep at night, Mr. President? Yes, da, 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 da. anywhere. In our bushes? We bushes, have our, yes. We have our own bush home. Yeah, we have, it's like a condominium, you know? We have all these bushes. That's... It's a rest around it, and then inside we got mattresses and everything. So, where do you go to the bathroom, then? Alley? You know, find someone's back door, I'll lock to their car and piss in their back seat, but. I was going to go back here, actually, but you guys came. So, what about like normal people that have TVs and VCRs? Don't you wish you had all that stuff? Not really. Not being we're able to listen we're to not that in society. Why? You know, we don't need TV. we don't need all that shit. We don't need any of it. Where does your parents think you are? Uh, my father's dead. My mom, I, she's in a shelter. I don't know where she is. I don't think she knows where I am either. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> what are you doing in about five years? Probably the same thing. Since I was 14. 17. Do you ever change your clothes? Um, yeah, I used to, but um, generally this is like my traveling clothes. How long since you had a bath? <laughs> oh shit, a month and a half maybe. You're into punk rock though. Hell yeah. yeah. You're yeah. into punk and drinking. I hate life and I hate society, but I'd rather drink beer. I'd rather like live for beer. That's what I live for. You go to many punk rock shows? Yeah, all the time. How do you get in? Rush the door usually. <laughs> Whatever I have to do to hustle, you know, and get in, you know. Most of the clubs are too far to walk, and I got really big blisters on my feet. So let me ask you a question. Uh, what happens when I? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned you. How do you like living on the streets? It's all right. It's better than the abuse I had in my home, mental and physically. My stepmom would beat me over the ass with a two by four, and they call me a loser and that all their fights are caused by me they always fight because of me and they're alcoholics and drug addicts so i just followed in their footsteps and ended up on the street my dad's a computer nerd and my mom's a tweaker a what tweaker what is that uh, it's a person who does a lot of speed 
When you were growing up, did she do a lot of speed? Uh, I didn't even really know her until I was like 12. And then after that? Yeah, I wasn't raised with her though. She, she, she snorts it or what? Yeah. She shoot it? No. Uh -huh. She just snorts it? Yeah. I bet the house is clean, huh? Yep. <laughs> My mom used to drink before she gave birth to me, and she fed me booze in my bottle and put me to sleep because I cried at night. Oh, that sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> so what? I liked it. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm an alcoholic. I dig it. Well, you want to say anything to your mom right now? Hi, Mom. Thanks for making me an alcoholic. I love you. Where you live, man? On the street. <laughs> On the street. How do you get money to go into punk rock shows? Panhandle. Or a scam. You ever steal stuff? No. No? Not steal. What a good boy. Why are you on the street? Because I got kicked out of my house when I was nine years old for setting my house on fire. For what? For setting my house on fire. Why'd you do that? I was trying to light a heater. It was an accident? Yeah. So your parents kicked you out? Yes. They put me in a, a shelter home. And then forgot about me and then... And you've been on the street ever since? Yes. Are you sad about that? Not really. No. What do you do every day? I panhandle. It's what rain. do your parents do? My parents? My parents are bikers. You, uh, you got a home right now? No. Why not? Why not? I lost my job and I couldn't afford the apartment I was staying in. What's that on your arm? It's an anti-swazi. So you don't like those skinheads? No, sure not. You ever fight with them? I fight a lot with them. Are they mean? They're pretty mean, yeah. Are you mean? Yeah. Are you angry? Right now? Mm, no. In general? No, well, I'm angry hearted, yeah. Can you describe the, what the kids look like that you see out there? Uh, well, most of them are the spare change, what we call gutter punks, um, you know, look like they haven't been eating much, uh, drink a lot, probably take drugs, um, get into all sorts of trouble, sleep in the street type of thing. You guys ever hear that name, gutter punks? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah what does that mean? Uh, dirty drunk fuckers who, like, wander around and terrorize people Only in the fun. streets. I don't know. Is that you? Pretty much, that's us. Yeah. Where's your parents? Wherever. You don't know? I don't know. You ever talk to them? Nope. How old are you? 22. How long have you been on the street? So it's 13. Do your parents know where you are? No. Uh, when's the last time you talked to them? My mom disowned me and my dad disowned me. So there's no Why? Because they, they, they think I'm a freak. When you got all these piercings and stuff, where do you get the money for that? I'm doing myself. You do it yourself? Mm hmm Doesn't it get infected? Well, yeah, but it goes away. What yeah. happened to your arm right there? A bunch of skinheads decided to kick my ass and put a motorcycle muffler to my arm, so... That was that. So you like skinheads? No. <laughs> Not at all, <laughs> to be honest, but... Where do you sleep every night? Yeah, there. I don't know. Oh, the alleys or what? Alleys, rooftops, wherever. Aren't as you afraid as... out there? Is anybody going to hurt you out there? I don't think anybody could hurt me any. I don't know. I've been hurt enough, so I don't think anybody. Doesn't that make take... you sad that you've been hurt that much? No.
mine one day. I love it. I'm tight. I never thought I'd be at Gizmo's mom's kind of stuff. Why do they call you eyeball? Um, I sleep with uh, one eye open. And a friend of mine was, um, he was talking to me while I was asleep. He thought I was awake. And I was dead asleep, actually. And my eye was half open. You know, I was in some squat. And he's all, hey, man, look, come, with, come with us and let's go do this and that. And I was, I was totally oblivious to the fact that he was talking to me. And then I kind of snort a little out. Okay. And um, he realized I was asleep, so he started calling me that eyeball guy. Yeah, that, you know, that guy with the eyeball, you know, and it kind of stuck. There's a good pile of stuff. Those parents are back rats, man. Quick ease. What does that do? <laughs> what room is this? This is the living room. Oh, what's this? Ooh. A cop doll. We should do something with this later. Margie, can you walk to the TV? Yes, you know. <laughs> Show me. Can you walk yes, over to the TV? Yeah. Because you know, I know my house. But I'm not crazy. Can I walk over there? Yeah, you can come. This way, this way, not okay. this way. Okay. This way. This way? This way. Okay. This way, this way. Well, I love your house. I hate it. <laughs> and they wonder where punk rockers come from. There's the rooms right here. Okay. Guys are out here. Uh, according to the signs, please do not do not smoke inside or my mom will shot you. Says. <laughs> <laughs> walking down the street on Hollywood Boulevard and I was trying to get to work and I was really pissed off because <laughs> there was like a lot of people actually I was on a skateboard and there was a lot of people out there and I was just trying to get through and I'm like ah, I gotta get through I gotta get through I gotta go to work I'm late and I'm like dun, 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 you know it just started going through me and then I had to say screw it I'm gonna be late for work because I had to stop behind a building and write a song real quick <laughs> Couch tour? Uh, I'm couch surfing. Couch tour. I live on the streets, actually. When you need uh, to rehearse, how do you get together? We don't know how to get a hold of each other. Yeah. yeah. How do you get a hold of each other? Pagers or wherever. We know where the per particular yeah. places we couch tour at. Sometimes it's real hard. Yeah. As far as I know, we're the only real street punk band in L.A. The only band that lives on the streets. This one's squatter punk. <laughs> actually stepped into an abandoned building and went to sleep I was 14 I believe and I thought at the time I'm probably the only kid in LA or the United States that's uh you know living in an abandoned building I didn't even know what squat was or anything like that you know and there's then, a lot now yeah decide to live on the streets just because of the simple fact that they know they can't exist in rigorous society they can't go on it's not because of them it's because of what society's become it's in decline it's, it's falling apart and, and rioting of, of the youth who can't buy houses and can't get good jobs and aren't getting the education they need that is you know that's basically an inevitable factor of the future all systems collapse so i think that there's an inevitable <laughs> economically based class war that's going to happen in the United States, I think the economic system is, is taking the haves and the have-nots and separating the classes to where it's just poor and rich anymore. The middle class is dying away. And 
every society has a rise and fall and a beginning and an end, you know. And and it happened in Rome, happened in England, you know, and it'll happen here. We gather in all just like Dungeons and Dragons. Punk is gearing to have bigger audiences or smaller or what right now? Well, real punk is getting smaller audiences and uh, like the sellout stuff is getting bigger audiences. The most that we've been able to play for is probably 300, maybe. Okay. You know. And the least? When you've done a show, the least people that were ever there? Two. <laughs> What if some record company came and tried to sign you and give you a bunch of money? And how do you feel about that? Mm, I mean, it's it's iffy. You know, am I going to be their puppet or am I going to be able to, to, you know? Money can't be an issue. Yeah, money's not not what I'm concerned with. What I'm concerned with is, am I going to be able to say what I want? What I want to say isn't going to be playable on MTV. I get more of a jolly, I, you know, off of uh, you know walking down the street seeing some kid I don't even know and hearing him sing lyrics to my song, you know, and that's, that, that's like way more cool than probably ever seeing myself on MTV would right, ever be. Back. The, the major labels and, and, and the MTV and the, and the radio stations, they're afraid of this stuff, you know? It's volatile, it's like volatile chemicals, you know? Well, Mixing MTV. with kids, it's gonna what? blow up. Anybody out here into bondage or anything like that? Pierce nipples, you know, shit like that. So, your main priority in life is? My band. Band before anything. Band before my job, band before yep. bitches. Because I love women, and I don't want them to get in the way of my band. But, uh, I like the audience reaction. Your girlfriend got beat up. Where's she at? She's okay. So they kicked her out? Where's she at? She's outside. There's something about when a woman comes, you know, is, is like showing that that tough side of her that really turns me on. You know, that's surprising. I would think that you'd like these winky chicks, you know? No, I like I like tough chicks. Huh. I'm shocked. You know, my girlfriend she's Yeah, that little girlfriend you got now seems kind of like a pop. No, actually she's she's got a uh, real you know she's she she's is. got a little bit of a tougher side in her than I do, you know. She does? Yeah, I really think it would be better off if uh, the world was run by women. If I had a daughter, I would w I would love it if she was a lesbian because I don't trust guys and I, I trust women a little bit more. Uh, see, I love a strong woman and I love to see a woman a like her over me, you know. You do? Yeah, if she can kick my ass, man, I can fall in love. I just want to be you, who you can Uh, right now I have a job doing phone sex. <laughs> Does it gross you out to do that? Oh yeah, I'm I'm straight, so. Oh, I'm it's really... gay phone sex. You I had this guy that you know he was he was obese. He had an obesity problem. He uh he wanted to he was about 350 pounds. He wanted to be 400 pounds. I mean like 500 pounds. He wanted to hit five bills. He would incorporate food into sex, you know. So things like uh, let's pour honey or you know let's pour syrup all over you. I think and roll you in, in in Fruit Loops and eat them off your ass, you know. And he'd say that I eat them off my flubbering ass, you know. <laughs> that guy was too much, man. You don't get paid to do work because you like it, you know. You get paid because you don't like it. I hate my job. <laughs>
you guys got in that wreck, you were drinking a lot? Yeah. Yeah. Look in here. Yeah. So there's like six of us in the car. And the girl that was driving was drinking? Yeah. She get she was getting off at the exit, and she, she swerved over and hit the center divider and spun the car out. When the car started spinning out and stuff, I don't know. It was just pretty beat. And it flipped, and I was like, holding on to shit and fucking... And all of a sudden, I hit my head and blacked out. And me and Mikey and Ricky Tiki, we all flew out of the car. And all I remember was waking up on the dirt. And I got up. And um, I, took a, I took two steps. And I collapsed. Um, Stephanie, she got crushed by the steering wheel. And... Um, I got my back broken and Mikey got fucked up and and Ricky Tiki died and uh this one time after all these years it just, just fucked me up. You know, this is where I am today. So if you could walk again, do you think you would drink again? I would drink but I wouldn't drive. Sometimes, like maybe tonight. You sick, dude? What do you need? Hey, Ross, will you shut flush that toilet, by the way? Hey, wait, wait, where should I go to get your food? I want to get some dinner. I didn't get Taco Bell tattooed on my nipple for no reason. You got a ticket today? What'd you get a ticket for? Drinking. Being a wanker. Drinking in public? I got I was drinking cider and cider and they made us pour it out. So what'd you do with your ticket, man? I ate it. Right on. What'd you get your ticket for? Fucking same shit. Drinking cider. Right? Guys, guys, be quiet. Did I just see you puking in the bathroom? Yes. Why would you do that? Because I got cirrhosis and I can't fucking drink that well. Shut the fuck up! Quinn! <laughs> How do you get the money for this place? My folks and uh, I got a uh, disability. From the accident? <clears throat> yeah. How many people have their own place to live? Hey, what's your name? Steve. Steve, come in, sit down, man. Now. Now. Steve, 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 where do you live? Oh my God. In his van. You live in your van? Yeah. All right. But we live right off Hollywood, man. We got a home. We don't pay no rent. We got a nice apartment. 
Sasha. We got electricity, a radio, tapes. We got a nice home. Wait, wait, wait. Don't you know? I get a rose for my birthday. Don't you know most of the people in this country got electricity? Yeah, but we don't even have to collect welfare to get it. We just steal it. It's there. Steve, Steve, where's your family? Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas? It's a drinking packet. Yeah, my dad's a PIO. What does that my mean? My brother is a pri- he has one. This yeah, is like... Oh, that's a good one. That's a good Where are you all going to be five years from now? Square? Drum! <laughs> coming up and saying thank you for letting us hang here yeah because i feel like they, they they care about you a lot because they were trying to get you to the hospital and everything yeah yeah i know All right. and i appreciate everyone and for for helping me out and da 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 yeah. You guys care about about Darius or what? Hell yeah! Yeah, more than, yeah. More than he knows. He ain't that guy. More than he acknowledges, yeah. man. More than he wants to believe. Way more. Yeah, stick it. <laughs> <laughs> so they cleaned up most of the bottles when they left. The this is for Stevie. This is our shrine that we had for him. Look, for you I shall spill you some of my beer. I wish we could swill and that you were here. You can always drink here and then it's gone to this and look, that's Stevie's bedroll right there. Stevie, never got to see you sober. Thank God. Stevie, wish I could trade you. Yeah, that's a good one. I can think of a million people that could have gone instead of him, and want me being one of them. What's your name? Steve. Steve, come in, sit down, man. Oh. 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 So what do you know about Steve? I've known him for years. How old was he? He just turned 19. And his brother's just a little boy, that's all he was. I feel like you want to take him under your wing. And he used to go, dying over here, dying over here, and roll. Destroy the owl. Knock the fuck out. I've had three people die this month so far. But I never lost This is the first one I've ever been in. A fire? For, yeah, for a squat fire. We used to joke around about it, but I guess it ain't really that funny. Why do you live in places like this? Um, I believe in squatters' rights, and I don't have anywhere to stay. So how long were you squatting in here? Um, about three weeks. Me, Stevie, and Billy were upstairs. His, and Stevie just came back to the squat with his little puppy, Ruth. No, we've been drinking all day. He was with me. Bye, we were about to come here and crash out, too. There's a skinhead guy. What's his name? Oh, uh, yeah, um, Spooky. Spooky and her and Spooky were down here. Squid had got pissed because the skinhead was, was like, swooping on his girlfriend, right? And so he went upstairs to crash out. I was up there, and I was coming down to check on her. And he decided to come down and see if they were fucking or not, you know, because he was pissed. Because Who saw the flames first? I did. Can you tell me what you did at that point? Freaked out. I hit Stevie in the chest. Squat fire! Why wouldn't Steve wake up? Steve he was, was too drunk, He's drunk. He's so drunk. I started grabbing all my stuff because I had my pallet laid out. And, went, and just even in that two seconds... The flames were already poking through the door up there. And there was a, a squat candle, which is a lot of a lot of wax that's put into a can or or glass or an ashtray or something. A wick put in it and just used, you know. I ran out, threw my shit, jumped onto the roof, went down, across the street, and I looked, and no one was coming out. And I tried to come back in, but the smoke was too thick. We saw the smoke from from Hollywood Boulevard, and so we cruised down here, and we saw the place was on fire. When we were outside, we were screaming at the firemen where all there's people still in there. There's people, that's why they went upstairs first. Let's go and take this off, yeah.
What happened to the dog? I got burned alive and they finally left him in here. They dragged him outside over there to the front porch and buried him next to the front porch. Who? Here lies Ruth, the baddest squat dog ever. How come the dog didn't run away, do you know? Probably because uh, Stevie was holding on to him. Holding on to him? probably holding on to him. He's probably tied up or something. Although, when we found the dog, we think it was Stevie. Mm -hmm. idea about what you want to be when you grow up not really <laughs> it's the things are so fucked up in this world it's like it's there's really nothing that there's no goals right now not for me at least well, what are you gonna do in five years man i'll be drinking oh yeah drink myself to death that's all i'm gonna do what are you gonna do five years from now what are you gonna make out of your life i'll probably be dead in five years from now <laughs> What do you think is going to happen to you in 10 years? What are you going to be doing? I'll be dead in 10 years. I'll be dead in five. Okay. What are you laughing about, Amanda? What are you going to do in five years? <laughs> I'll be dead, too. <laughs> well, doesn't that make you feel bad? No. <laughs> you guys won't miss us. <laughs> no shit. That's kind of sad, don't you think? No. I'm not happy here. The sooner I go, the better, as far as I'm concerned, really. I don't, I don't live a happy life. Hey, what happened to your eye, Amanda? Huh? I jumped by four people. No way. Yeah. When? Like, Friday? Imagine if we had... You know, carpe diem. I take today, I look to tomorrow, but I plan in ten years ahead. I'm not going to go look for a job, but if a job is me, I'll take it. You're going to enter the workplace? I'm going to try it. Uh, yeah, 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 I am, I am, I am. You're going to enter the workplace? Yep. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> what are you going to be when you grow up? A cook? I don't know. <laughs> Something, I don't know. A gas station guy? I don't know. But you seem like kind of a hopeful person. I try to be. Even though you're homeless? Yeah, I try to be able to look for the best, you know. Don't you get depressed out there on the street? Eh, sometimes, but other times I just feel that, you know, I'm strong, I can make it through. We're the cockroaches, man. We're the ones who are going to live through everything. <laughs> so when the world is over, when everything is ended, then there's only going to be... Punks. Fuck people!